All right, next game. Okay, we're banning Oriana and Ari again. We're banning Ash this time? Interesting to me because I feel like why? Have been somewhat reluctant and we're first rotation banning Jax. All right, what's changing here? Varus. You can take Callista? Callista? Okay, Callista, they're going to take Varus. Yep, Varus Talia. Okay, makes sense. Take Annie Renekton. All right, so very different approach this time from FlyQuest. They're not going to play jungle. They're not going to play jungle. Okay, so you, you ban junglers here. So you already banned the Jacks. You probably banned Lee Sin here. Lee Sin Poppy. Don't let Umti play Poppy into fucking Renekton and Callista. Don't do it. They make mistakes in the laning phase. As well. yeah. um, obviously, TL recognizing that from we're banning the Volibear. Okay, we're banning Viego. This makes sense. Inspired likes to play Viego, and you basically have a reset composition with Annie and um, Callista. Right? So I like I like the Viego ban. Poppy, yes. Okay, so they do ban Poppy. Lease in for Umti. Oh, we're actually just going big tank line. So we're going to take Sejuani. So Juani does have good synergy with the Cassante and top side. Nautilus falls all the way through the draft, so it's free. You definitely take the Nod here. Yeah, it's probably Bra I agree with Sven. It's probably Braum or Alistair. Lee Sin going to be taken for Inspired then. Oh my god. No! No! So you can gank really easily. You press flash W, the guy's done. Yeah. You know, this yeah. him, he's just gonna die. Kill friend. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same time. Flyquest has lane power, early game power. Okay, Flyquest. You cannot fuck this up. You can literally at level six push APA out of lane using any ult. And you should get every Drake, every Drake to Flyquest. Surely, guys. Dude, Braum is like giga free here. There are like four melees, basically, because Callista has no range. Braum is so free here. You'd have the fattest front line in the universe. We should do it. Uh, draw my <laughs> Thank life. You, we can do it. Draw my life, but just but it's us just doing stick figures. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can make some real ugly looking stick can figures. I, I tell you that because I can. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, we got this. We'll have a whole. Yeah. Uh, we'll, get that, we'll get that going for some. Yeah. <laughs> Brom is giga free here, guys. Yeah, exactly. Core JJ plays a good Brom too, so. We cannot overwhelm you with garbage. All right. Well, while we're figuring out what we're gonna do with that, it's time. To toss things down to Raz, who's standing by for an interview with FlyQuest coach Nuke Duck. Yep, got Nuke Year of the Duck. Here. Just a quick question: uh, What in your vision went wrong in the the first game? Um, we play like split comp with poke against like low engage team comp. Um, but I think the players are nervous, so executing it was like hard for us. It's like supposed to, we shouldn't just fight five v five, run at them should get like lane prios and poke them and look for picks but we weren't trading in the lanes and weren't finding like the correct mid game setup so yeah now we dropped a bit like easier teamfight comp sweet uh speaking of like the ease of it what about this comp if you guys want to win this game is like the ticket i don't i don't think this is easy they they basically have to have prio in their lanes in order to get early objectives here cuz they 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 just basically the longer this game goes, guys, they actually just can't kill Cassante, Sejuani, and Tom Kench. They can't. They can't kill him. Because if Annie doesn't burst somebody down, this guy is never going to get to auto attack on Callista. This guy is never going to get in range. And you are simply, you know, like this guy is going to free free firing on hit Varus. And you're going to be hitting him with a million rocks. So, I mean, you you cannot actually play this composition. I think if you play like to our level, really late game. So we have to look for FlyQuest to do something early. Maybe their win condition. We try to blow too much load on one guy and they save him with Tom Kench, I guess something like that. 
We appreciate that. A lot of action early, so I'm going to send this one straight back to the casters. Yeah, because of the time catch, if you can survive, I don't like the time catch because I think it makes you gig a week in lane and like you can get a 20 minute soul against you. 22 minute soul, right? 20 minute soul is as fast as you could possibly. I mean, it's not possible because you have to have time to kill dragon at five minutes, but you guys know what I mean. 22 minute soul. JJ's performance on said toad was very impressive in game number one. We'll yeah. see if he can reprise that. He I don't only read Twitch two. chat, LimeWire. Really fun. Uh, Who do you think won the jungle battle over all this series? I haven't seen all the games. The coach they lost to the coach most involved with draft? Uh, maybe. No! Oh God! He even goes past the ward. Eric, thank you for your tier one subscription. What disappoints you most about League of Legends currently? Uh, that Riot Games runs it. Oh man, he sneaks in there too. Flash W stun. Oh, dude. Inspired isn't in range to auto. He's not in range to auto. And he already used his Q. Uh... Where is APA's W? Does he not take W at three? Does he not have mana for W? Oh! Yeah, he inspired gets stunned by the by the Talia E as he Q twos. Oh, it's such it's so bad. It was such a good path here, too. He opens up with E. Flash W, stun. Inspired, there's Q1. He stuns himself with Q2. So, guys, the correct play there is that you flash auto and then chase Talia off the rocks and then Q2, right? But it's understandable that they thought that's the... Annie Q right there. It's understandable that they thought that this would be the case, but he's not stun locked long enough. And Inspired should have flashed over and then Q2. Inspired have no W? No, he doesn't have W. His W is down. You can see it. I don't know when he, he used it to get over the, he used it to get over here. They were digging into some stats before we started showing all chat on broadcast. APA 7 and 7. After all chat starts getting featured on broadcast. 14 and 3. The more people that see his gap find him. Hey, the more So they wanted to set the trap here, right? Because they just, they know that they have a clever path. So he's going to be able to E first. Oh, it's such a shame. He W'd himself, yeah. No way. They got the early Are you going to talk about the Esports World Cup getting Riot titles? We already have on SI, and we will do so again this week, I'm sure. Ah. Uh. Alright, well, they actually decided that they were going to fight in bot side this game and, like, maybe do a, a fourth wave push into turret, so that's good. Did Q2 damage connect? No. I do not believe it did. It should have been stopped by the stun. <laughs> How Doublelift do this split? Well, if he had been on Team Liquid, he would have won LCS, apparently.
amazing when my man goes to MSI and he's all chatting Faker. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's just he's gonna be yapping to everybody. He's gonna I be mean, all chatting the goat. So last world he almost beat Faker. They almost beat T1. Now this world we're gonna improve. He just didn't type enough. That was the problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We didn't show it. Exactly. Uh -huh. right, well, oh no, you saw the QT damage. The QT damage went down. Exactly. It actually did go down. You can see it right there. That's the Q2 damage. Well, we can see this one more time. Almost able to burst him down. Then as Jensen flashes oh, forward, yeah. he gets Q stunned up by Umpty. The passive stacked up. <laughs> he gets A stun as well. And you just know how good that feels. How frustrated your opponents are. You know they're in their head. Well, also inspired flash forward. It was yeah. just barely unable. I don't blame Inspire for making that play. It looked like a really good play. You don't think you have to necessarily use your flash right there. So to preemptively flash the E does seem, you know, extreme because you want to hold your flash if you can. What the fuck? Whippo, Impact is ghosted. You cannot run away. You are on the other side of your minion wave and turret. Impact gets a solo and a cherry on top. Top gap. Oh my god. Back to back Asana. That is bad. And he just gets a solo kill and the freebie flash on top. Impact hit him with the Q question mark. What is up, Bobo? Last time we heard the chat, like 85% of chat agreed to question mark is talking trash. I can't believe there's 15% of people who disagree. Yeah, how could you disagree that that's trash talking? Honestly? It's Kobe 1, Kobe 2, Kobe 3, oh, no, it's not trash talk. The, the, the question mark is the most efficient of trash talks. Oh yeah, it's Bottom the side classic. Though. Abyssal Dive brings Core JJ in between Busio and an escape route, but Inspire's ready for the 3v3. Oh Busio's gonna drop first, Yawn's still alive for now, but Inspire picks him up. Core and Umpty still trying to find more on the back end of this fight as Masu has to flash back away. Over in mid lane, APA's under pressure as a rotation oh for Busio. Core JJ really did play well in playoffs, guys. I mean, they just get so much damage down before Inspire can get into this engagement. And Yeah, it's just too much damage. So I guess we're just not going to get any Drakes. Very cool. We're going to lose Drakes now. Busio went way too early. Yep. Oh yeah, we didn't we didn't actually give we didn't give impact credit. That's right, we didn't give him credit. We gotta hit him with the Kleos, guys. Glory to Impact for the 1v1. Busio has been really bad this series, guys. He's had a bunch of like whack ass pointless deaths. Goes in too early. He was zoned out. He saw the hook angle onto Yun, thought maybe Inspire could get there faster. Who did I get to do all these graphics? A Tantalos, of course. That's that's where your subscription money goes, guys. <laughs> Me buying silly graphics. Go for another repeat play on bottom side. So glad they're pulling off here. But as you said, it's still beneficial for them. They get to rotate over to Dragon. Do you think that TL can get better? Not really. <laughs> Feel like they're already performing as good as they reasonably can. Yep. I don't think Yun is suddenly going to turn into the best AD carry in NA, guys. Just use his full combo on the minion wave also. 
So there was zero zero chance there, and Jensen got in range for the stun. Once you close that gap, uh, good roam from Blair in mid. Ah, so AP Purple has already been good about roaming mid. Very nice E into the minion wave, straight into W. Good play. I mean, they punished the lack of flash, so that's good. Now they're going to be able to punish it again. Because the thing that's a little bit underrated here is that Jensen's now six, and there is a window of time without flash. So even though they died and lost that 2v2 early, you can actually still do something with this, because at least you got APA's flash. That's a good hook. Young trolling, though. Young trolling without flash. Do you have a favorite team to watch internationally from each region right now? What do you mean internationally? My favorite teams from each region? Uh, LCS, nobody. Um, LEC, G2. Uh, LPL. Who's my favorite LPL team right now? I mean, FPX is the most fun team to watch. Um, LCK, Genji. But I like BLG too in LPL. I'm sad they gutted my favorite team, uh, LNG. For trying to snowball and just fighting over here. Yeah, and Cordis wasn't there to actually cover Yon. You know, Yon didn't have the flash, so he used the heal for the moves. Actually, in LCS, my favorite team to watch was Shopify, no joke. They were fun. Now, Bwipo, Ulti's forced. Jensen's on the roam. He's going to try to get up here. Impact should just be able to walk it out, though. Yeah, Bwipo's a hungry crocodile, but Impact is just trying to get away from this one. They chain CC to Kasante, but they don't have enough damage to kill him here just yet. Impact brings Bwipo back underneath the turret. He gets away in the meantime. Jensen used ult in mid lane, looks like. When did he use ult? Did he ult wave in mid? Now Bwipo, Ulti's forced. Jensen's on the roam. He's going to try to get up here. Impact should just be able to walk it out, though. Yeah, Bwipo's... His ult's on cooldown. But Impact is just trying to get away from this one. They chain CC to Kassante. I mean, they kill Impact if Annie has ult here, so... I, I just don't know what happened. Oh, there it is. Okay. It was used on APA. There, I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. It was used in mid. Yeah, this is how it should be used, too. I mean, you prevent the you prevent the Talia roams. You get priority, so you can create other roams. I'm just blind. Sorry. Well played by Impact, though. He's doing that to AP all game, throwing any LT to push them out of lane and push wave. Yeah, that's how you play any. You play it versus Ari, same way. It's, you, it gives you so much mid prio. Especially Lee Sin loves this sort of setup on the map, and he's got flash plus ultimate ready. That ward here for TL does see him take Scuttle Crab, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get his play off of, but that Lee Sin is very dangerous right now. The Lee Sin's particularly being piloted by Inspired. Remember the last time that we saw FlyQuest, he found amazing angles mm -hmm. on Berserker in the games against Cloud9, where he was able to bring them back from a disadvantageous situation. Here's what happened in mid. This was Inspired trying to make a move, but APA with the flash in time. Flash is the kick. It's okay, though. I mean, getting his flash down is still very good. Inspired can actually just make a flash kick play on him now later on. So, yep. Yep. Really that you're thinking about getting the kill. Right. You just drop tippers on cooldown. You just pressure them out. Use that to get free push on the wave. And you just constantly go for this chunk. Because tippers is actually quite a low cooldown. And Jensen is also playing phase rush. We didn't touch on that. Um, but that is something that is pretty atypical against some of these. Yeah, Jensen also just making sure that he doesn't give the tippers. He's using the tippers to scout. And also so he doesn't give tippers gold over. To use her ulti to roam. If you're constantly taking control over the wave. Shoving her back. I used to be SKT big fan. I was never an SKT fan. I was a KT fan. I just hate this version of KT. So I supported KT big time last year. I just love Keen. That's really my main fault in life is loving Keen. The key part there is that you get the flash cooldown on it. Summoner spell cooldown reduction. Because Annie just wants to 
make the most of that key and when APA has no flash it is an easy easy setup for FlyQuest so uh, off of Inspire We're thinking about Impact playing for over 10 years now? Yeah he's amazing Yeah he can compete in with he could play an LCK tomorrow if he wanted to LPL not allowing teams to create their own content on YouTube. Been told by JDG Discord the LPL doesn't let them do it. What the fuck does that mean? FlyQuest only got a single kill. Whippo's Urgot was the only one who managed to get himself on the board. So for everybody else, it's time to step up. Inspired on this Lee Sin being a playmaker. Jensen on the Annie being that huge cannon for the team fights. He'll walk over a ward as he looks for another roam up towards the top side. I mean, bot lane is looking so much better. You know, they're up 20 CS or more for Masu. And he got the kill and the assist. Impact potentially in trouble. Yeah, Impact's going to have to try to get away from Whippo here as the Dominus is used. They got to make sure they don't give Cassante the angle to go all out and try to isolate one of them. The burst is enough. There we go. All right, Whippo's having some good map plays here. Why do you love Keen so much? Because Keen is a fucking amazing top laner. He's super versatile, changes his play style, depends on what his team needs. He's very selfless in the way that he plays the game. Really fun to watch. If somebody mistakenly gets closer to the wall so that he gets an ult angle and they, they avoid that. So see if can answer. Yeah, it's probably just a China thing where they don't want to use like YouTube or Google products or whatever. All my homies hate Kuro. I'm Kuro's number one hater. I am the, the I am the king of the Kuro hate club. So the Kasanti is very squishy to the Annie right now. Whereas Buffalo basically has absolutely no chance in the 1v1. So I think it's smart. It's good map movement here from Jensen to get out there on the map. All right, neutral objectives look like they're just going to be traded this time around as the second Drake goes over to Team Liquid. Never mind. Busio repeating what happened in game number one. Or is he? Masu's ready to kill. Can't believe they lost the first two Drakes in this game. He's stuck in the river with no way out. Masu's going to make sure he drowns. FlyQuest finds kill number five. Them blowing all of APA's flashes have been very good. How does it feel to know that players like QV and King are world champs, but Keen isn't? Neither is Smeb. Tragic. Dude. QV and King, those are the ones you pick? Lo fucking Looper is a world champion. Gimgoon is a world champion. You didn't even pick the you didn't even pick the worst top laners to win worlds. FlyQuest also, with this early gold advantage, can keep pushing and make the most of their uh, Void Grubs that they've gotten five of already. So trying to get some extra gold out of power plates while they still stand, they can push on up. They're going to teleport here. Even Whippo really wants to make... Who do you like more, Smeb or Keen? Keen. On the way. Exactly. All five Grubs going the way of FlyQuest so far. But I don't like how Keen chokes in playoffs and international games. Going for the dive on and also, I don't like that Keen fucking lost to Cloud9. <laughs> How is empty the LCK never watched it before uh he he was very good on a bad team. You think Keen is better than Speb? I didn't say that. I said I liked Keen more. You should make a video of the worst players to win worlds in each position. Uh Looper. Uh Baolan. Pyoshik, maybe? Team comp that got, being to go into TL and a lot of these Crown, yeah, Crown's a good shout out. Ghost, oh yeah, Ghost. Big fraud. Gimgoon way worse than Looper? No, dude. It's close. It's close, though. Back and forth between these two teams. You know, game one started a lot more slowly. Uh, it just felt like Fly kind of let TL have their way with it. This time, being able to kind of enforce their will on the game. I don't know who would, who the AD carry would be. Gets that deep ward, but it is spotted by Umpy, and it's immediately pink. So Piglet. Piglet was really good when he won, though. Nervous that there was a potential dive coming, so he's not even going to bother clearing out. Just going to walk right past it. Busio is dog shit. Dude, he's getting slammed in his little bussy this game. And last game. It's Ghost in LWX. Yeah, that's fair. 
away unless something is lurking in the shadows. APA on this Talia has his flash ready, but FlyQuest is not afraid to go and focus this guy. This has been a strategy that a lot of teams... And that's enough. I didn't name myself... He named himself Busio, guys. Like, I don't know what you want. <laughs> he named himself that. <laughs> how do you not say that? All right, so we're cross mapping for Harold. Team Liquid makes very good cross map plays. Like Team Liquid's macro is legit, very good. They they don't make a lot of macro mistakes. They're a smart team in terms of calling. The combo, I think, the combo of Impact Core JJ and Umpty has made their macro very good. That's just free. Best players to never win worlds in each role: Chovy, uh, Score, uh, Khan, maybe in top lane, or Smeb. It's probably Smeb. Uh, support. Caria, probably. Oh, Caria just won. I'm dumb. Uh, it was Caria until last year. It was also Deft until two years ago. Uzi for AD carry. Missing? Yeah, missing might be it. Gorilla is a good one. Gorilla, or Mad yeah. Mad Life had a very short peak though. He was bad for a long time. Gorilla maybe. Mickey X is another good one. Steph Lehens? No, it's not. Lehens is in the conversation, but I don't think it's Lehens. Prey Uzi is. Champions are on their first completed item power spike, so it'll be a pretty even fight if they decide to challenge one another for it. APA even having the fully evolved Seraph's embrace as he just recently got the tier fully stacked up. Score never did win worlds, did he? Nope. Just way better set up for this though. Impact has already moved down as well. There is TP for Whippo, but I feel like it's it's gonna be tough for them to actually walk in when Tealer fully set up. Also, Cajal said Barrel is the most successful player to never play for T1. I mean. If by successful you mean has won two worlds, <laughs> I mean, he's right in terms of accomplishments. Is he right in terms of like ability? No. Clearly, Chovy is better. And clearly, score is better. Oh my god, Inspired actually steals this. Amazing. Umpty got distracted, guys. He also... Here's the other problem. Umpty has 900 spite. And he has 1,200 spite. So he actually just doesn't win the smite war. It's whatever. It's a chemtech soul. It doesn't matter that much. Unlucky. Umpty just has no chance to actually smite that, though. Umpty, Umpty loses that smite fight 99 out of 100 times. That's a good call. Now you can use Harold to take out bot turret too. Well played by FlyQuest. Would I want a double elimination tournament at Worlds? I have wanted a double elimination tournament at every Worlds that has ever existed. Oh, beautiful flash kick. Inspired. Nice. Impact has a million sticks in him. Can't, can't say enough how great it is to be in a chat without emotes spam. I mean, you guys could spam emotes. <laughs> my my chat is very active, and you guys generally are pretty smart. 
dragon. Everyone but Umpty walked away from the dragon. Even Umpty walked away from the dragon. <laughs> yeah. He saw it at least in King in 2016 Bengi Crown LWX in 2022 Barrel is my all-time worst world's winner lineup. Yeah, but Barrel was weirdly clutch in the final. Bowlan is objectively worse than Barrel. I'm sorry. He does not hit the seismic shove. We're both still chasing after him, but he's already used the cooldown. Still he's, five he, more seconds before he's got the slice. He is, uh, he's really in there, boys. This croc is, oh, he finds the stun off the Weaver's wall. Bowlan is fucking bad, guys. So five he, more seconds before he's got the APA. And then in Spider-Man, at least in, he's like, okay, you're going to outsmite me. Let's get out of here. Honestly, though, Busio and Inspired turning that last play with the flash hook onto APA and then Inspired going in and getting the hook. Whippo wants to... Oh, oh, APA does not hit the... Well, you know, Whippo. Whippo's still chasing after him, but he's already used the cooldown. Still he's, five he... more seconds before he's got the slice. He is, uh, he's really in there, boys. Well, he has to be in there. He's waiting for the next minion wave because he knows that his team is, like, in... <laughs> The opposite side of the jungle is him. They're in blue side or blue side, blue side jungle, and so he has to trade one for one there. It's actually pretty well played by Bobo. He shouldn't have been that far forward, but he did pull he did pull TP out of impact to trade one for one. So it's actually net positive because there's nothing to. He's going to be up, and then he'll have TP advantage. So actually a good play by Bobo, guys. Actually a good play. For FlyQuest, not even 20 minutes into this game. Inspired quietly is as high level as the soul enters as well. He's got two level lead on Umpty. He is getting very strong. Look at his farm. He's got as much farm as his mid laner. More farm than the other mid laner. Yeah, I don't know like, about quiet. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy, man. He, I mean, he's 1-0-1, one, one, but he is getting really strong. Yeah. Absolutely massive bounce back, especially considering game one where Umpty just cleared him on every level. Here's another look at how the worst players to win worlds is everyone on season one fanatic. Um, that doesn't count as a worlds. We don't count that as a worlds win. Massive bounce back, especially considering game one where Umpty just cleared him on every level. I mean, it's smart. He waits for the minion wave to come back while, and then that way he can close the gap again, stops him. He got a massive giga heal though because everybody just walked in melee range of him. So it's well played by Bupo. So they're going to have TP advantage for the next Drake fight. So now they're going to try and make a side lane play. It doesn't matter if Jensen dies here, by the way. TL is literally just wasting TPs. They literally TP... Oh my god, they're so dumb. I, I, right after I say in this game that, TP, that TL makes good macro plays, look at this, guys. So... They know you don't have TP here. You use TP in the bot side. I wonder where they're going to be. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what they'll do with this information. I mean, Jensen's already done the work. He drew them down there. He's not going to help kill Baron. He's fucking Annie. How? How? How do you lose this with Rend and Smite? How do you lose it? Guys, guys, the way you do this is you smite. Here's the steps. Okay? One. Number one. Number two. Rend. Because rend does more damage than smite. There are a gazillion spears in this Baron. Oh. 
It does heal. That was weird. Baron does heal a little bit. Baron like healed a little bit right there. But you can, by the way, guys, you can actually smite Ren this right now. You can actually do it before this. You don't have to wait till it gets to 2100. Inspired smites it, though. They didn't rend. I don't think they rended, guys. Did he rend a person? Where was the rend? Am I blind? I think there's no rend. They smited at the same time. They smited simultaneously, so it would have done 2,400 damage. I think they just smited at the same time. I think there was no rend. You can hear it as the... Uh, all right, we'll listen for it. Oh, I think I did hear it, yeah. But you can do it earlier, guys. Yeah, spirits are still in TL jungle. You don't see him take any damage from it. True, Umpty has the spears in him. Good eye. He's got he's got one in him right there. No, 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 no. I think it goes away. No, I think it. I think he does rend. He rends after. He rends after, guys. That's the rend right there. He rends here after Baron's dead. We did it. We discovered where the rend was. It's right there. So they set this up very badly is really the thrust of it. You do not have to wait until it's 1900 HP. You do not have to, you, you do not have to rend it. You can actually smite this probably what at like, it depends on how many spears you have, but he has a million in there. Um, but you need to, you can probably do it from like 2,800 HP, 2,600 maybe. You can definitely do it right here, guys. You can 100% do it right here. You can 100% do it right here. So I don't know what the fuck was going on. It's embarrassing. You can't be doing that shit, guys. That's that is actually an unstealable Baron that gets stolen. Really nicely done from TL. That's that's what we're saying. It's actually just inexcusable, though. Thank you. Ooh, I got a bagel with cream cheese and strawberries. Delicious. It's a blueberry bagel, I'm told. What? Getting that knock up onto Inspire to make sure the Leeson can't Q the Baron to get a QQ plus uh, smite combo. Also, little things to try and help your jungler get things in. in you gotta make the other sucks the make. You can't make them make a mistake, guys. Teen Liquid didn't make them make a mistake. That was that was an unforced error by FlyQuest. That is an unlosable situation that you managed to lose.
guys, you can't fuck that up. This is a fucking profession. This is a finals. You cannot fuck that up. That is illegal. So he is going to walk it off. Meanwhile, Yon shows up with the chains of corruption. Busio is going to lose about 60%. Pressure is real. Yeah, well, that's why they lose finals, right? But it, it's fucking terrible. It's terrible gameplay. Because the Baron stolen negates the gold lead, and they still get to Dragon Soul points. Team Liquid still focused as ever, and now look at the map too. How quickly it turns in their favor for Vision after winning that fight. He plays the game without the casters, but with game sound. How does he do that? He must have access to a stream that I don't. They're both on two completed items, but you know more items in pocket, working towards that third there for Yon. Yon has been so good, so consistent on the various in playoffs for TL. He's got the Tom Kench behind him. An unforced error that still needed to punch. Okay. I guess he randomly pushed Smite, so he's a god. It's so a really nice. Speaking of good things Umti did, sick Glacial Prison. He literally throws this across the wall. Actually, super sick. Glacial Prison. Core JJ just eats Varus, so nobody gets hit by Bear. Terrible engage by Inspired, but they're just tilted and desperate. Oh! They're turning it around, though? Not sure about flashing for that kill, though. They don't have any pressure on the Masu though. Look how much damage Masu does. It's a good it's a good fight from Blippo and Masu. Did you already cover will you be covering DKKT? I watched it live last night. We'll see. I, it was a very bad series, so we'll do the rest of LC, LCK playoffs though, I promise. So he devours him out of the stun. Everyone is arriving, and it's everyone piles in on top of Yon here. And they get him into the pink warded bush, but Whippo stuns him immediately. Now it's really only APA on their team that does anything. Whippo played that well. Do you not have co-streaming rights? No, I don't. Why would I have them? Riot would never give them to me. What looked like an engage that I did not think was gonna work out. Yeah. The fact that it started off with the kick at no immediate And even if they did give them to me. Co-streaming rights would come with caveats that I couldn't criticize Riot, and I'm not going to do that. It's not worth the trade. I also can't co-stream LCK, guys. I have a family that's home in the evenings, and I want to spend time with my kids. So I'm not going to be streaming in the evenings when my family is home. No. I do this while my kids are at school. Besides, I don't, I, yeah, I, it's not worth the trade-off in any capacity. I like streaming now, where I could do the VOD reviews. Besides, me being a co-streamer would just be me being another co-streamer. I'm offering a very different kind of experience on these VOD reviews that nobody else is offering. You guys like that, so... Favorite player currently keen. Oh, 
bottom side. It took way too long. They couldn't finish on Masu. After this initial play on the impact, they get the kill on him. This took quite a lot of time. But TL saying, okay, we need to make something happen on the other side of the map. Three members went for impact. We must make a play elsewhere. They try to force it, but it's so long and drawn out. They can't kill Jensen or Masu off quickly. And it buys all the time that FlyQuest needs to be able to get there. It's all because of the double summoner spells from Matsu. He uses the cleanse on the Sejuani ult, and then he flashes the combo from APA. I'm watching both yours and Dom's stream. They're very good. Yeah, Matsu was at fault or coordination on the team fault for screwing up the smite rend. Uh, it's coordination on the team. You just have to agree on a number that you're going to smite rend at. So you have to talk about it and plan it. Apparently that didn't happen. Holy. Jensen beat him by more damage. Yep, 16. There you go. That's Monty surprise cameo at LCK finals. I might go. I might actually go. My wife and I were discussing going in person. As we've got impact again. Being the one having a base check. The Cassante will tank up as much as he can, but he does not want to remain. Team Liquid falling back now. They are once again down three and a half thousand gold. Whippo pops the dominance. He's ready to march forward. Umpty gets locked down, and Busio misses the dredge line. Now, they've got Whippo in the front of everybody as Umpty tries to escape. Whippo being kept alive here by the Sterics gauge. His impact goes all out. He's found Whippo in the back line. He's isolated him only for a moment, and Masu's ready to chase. He throws Busio right back in. Can't the catch from either side dies. the Cassante. from the top catch early in the fight every single time they spend one thing whether it's the tibbers or a kick or an ultimate from nautilus to get that ultimate on how is lol park i don't know i've never been they're gonna send everything on to yawn while that tom catch has no ulti it's really good play here layering those cooldowns and they're gonna give up that dragon even though it is dragon soul possibility tl after that fight they don't have the cooldown to win it so they immediately send what happened with twitch in korea was it shut down or i'm using it right now from korea they just shut down your ability to monetize if you are Korean and have like a Korean bank account. So you can't subscribe if you're a Korean viewer anymore. It only hurts it only hurts streamers whose audiences are majority in Korea, which mine is not. They are still in a commanding position. When you're looking at completed items, it's three fully completed items in the jungle for inspired Lee versus only the two of Umpty, one of which is a nice bow, it's like a thrift shop item. It doesn't really fully count. But this is an advantage to stake for the side of FlyQuest. Jensen now also on three fully completed items with that Crypt Bloom. Especially when TL have so many tanks on your team, and then you have all this percentage health damage on FlyQuest being built. The Leandries, the Blade of the Rune Kings, uh, up here on Matsu as well. Like, they are going to rip through these tanks that were so efficient on few items, and it becomes less efficient later the game goes, and you start to be starved for damage. And so positioning really matters. Look at this flank from Whippo up here. Sneaky crocodile. I'd also say TL really need to be the ones starting out the fight. If they can be the ones pushing a cooldowns, it's gonna go so much better for them as Inspired's looking. Yeah, Inspired wanted to jump in and try to find Yon, but now Whippo Whippo's doing a good job getting back into Yon on back into the back line, but Oh no. <clears throat> I mean Usually Lee Sin can help you because you wait until Tom Kench eats somebody and then you kick the Tom Kench and the person inside into your team. But sometimes you get a flank, right? Sometimes you get a flank, but you flash over and then you stun yourself on Talia rocks and then you walk very, very slowly here. And then... How did Core get stunned? Okay, he he actually just stuns Core instead. So the, the stun does nothing. Then he jumps in. And Inspired kicks Core JJ over the wall. So they miscoordinate, and then they get out for free. And then Core JJ commits suicide. Core JJ's like, I got the fattest knockup of all time. And he just knocks up Nautilus. Then he gets stunned and dies. What? Th guys, this is a fucking... Everybody is terrible in this team fight. Fire everyone. Fire everybody for that team fight. Fire everybody. 
And I enjoyed the CS2 major. I enjoyed what I saw of it. How is NA supposed to win Worlds if this is our best? NA is not supposed to win Worlds. You've been lied to by Reggie. I do like this, like, analyst couch setup where they're watching the game. It's cool. <laughs> 